Hello, my friends. Welcome again to my YouTube channel, Pediatric Talks with Dr. Kasvi. And today, we are going to talk about a very important topic, and that is how do we differentiate between Barter, Gittelman, and Little Syndrome from Pseudo Barter Syndrome. So, without further ado, let's dive in and get started. You might have heard about these syndromes Barter, Gittelman, and Little Syndromes. These are part of a group of disorders which are known as renal tubulopathies or channelopathies. So, what happens basically in these syndromes? there is a microscopic level problem in the renal tubules and that can be problem with the sodium potassium co-transport channel that can be problem with the magnesium channel that can be problem with the chloride channels and that leads to loss of certain electrolytes in the urine and the loss of these electrolytes then have got a profound effect on the body on the various metabolic processes that leads to a wide variety or constellation of signs and symptoms. So, we would be talking about Barter, we would be talking about Gittelman, we would be talking about Little syndrome. So, these three are renal channelopathies or tubulopathies and we would also discuss how this is different from what we call as pseudo Barter syndrome, something that resembles Barter syndrome but basically is not a renal pathology. Now, the question is, where would you suspect these problems, either Barter, Gittelman or Liddell? The answer is, any child, any child who is either well or either sick with a variety of symptoms, but where while you are investigating that child, you find that he, the child has got a primary metabolic alkalosis in his blood and that child is not on any diuretic medications so if a child who is not on any diuretic medications and he might be presenting with some symptoms or he may be apparently healthy looking and on investigations for example on a venous gas on a cap gas you find that the child has got primary metabolic alkalosis there you should start suspecting these syndromes now what does primary metabolic alkalosis mean. So, primary metabolic alkalosis means that your pH would be high. So, pH would be more than 7.45. The bicarbonates would also be raised. The bicarbonate levels are normally like um, 22 to 25. Some books say even up to 27 uh, milli equivalent. So, if it is more than that, then you've got a high bicarbonate level in the blood. So, you would be having a high pH, a high bicarbonate level and the carbon dioxide may be normal or may be increase it depends if the child is trying to compensate it by you know retaining carbon dioxide you know the body has got the opposite physiological mechanism to find so if there's an alkalotic mechanism uh, going on the body would try to counter it by bringing in, in like producing more acid so the carbon dioxide might be normal or might be on the higher side but primarily the pH would be high and the bicarbonate would be high that means that this is a primarily a metabolic alkalotic function and that child is not on any diuretics because certain types of diuretics like thiazide diuretics can also give you the same picture because that leads to loss of sodium and potassium in the urine and can give you a similar picture so provided that these kids are not on any uh, any diuretic medications and you find that they have got primary uh, metabolic alkalosis then you should start thinking about barter gittelman liddell and in certain cases pseudo barter syndromes as well and as I told you that these kids might be healthy or might present with other problems. So, they might be presenting with recurrent infections and um, you are worried why this child is having recurrent infections and you're trying to work them out or that child may be having a failure to thrive or that mild child, uh, that child might be having a problem of chronic vomiting or that child might be presenting with the renal stones or, or, or renal infections, could be anything, okay. In certain cases, age distribution and BP can help as well, like certain types of these, for example, Barter syndrome, it presents in infants uh, or in neonates, Gittelman syndrome presents in more older children and blood pressure can also help because uh, Liddell syndrome is the only uh, renal tubulopathy which causes hypertension. In rest of the conditions, the blood pressure would be either uh, on the lower side of the normal or there might be a frank hypotension as well. 
so that can help uh, uh, in, in that particular way as well. Now moving on to how do we differentiate uh, these syndromes from one another and what are the uh, clinical features of these syndromes. So starting with Barter syndrome. So Barter syndrome basically presents at the uh, beginning of the age spectrum. So mostly neonates and infants, they, if they have got Barter syndrome, they would be presenting in this age group. Usually they present with failure to thrive because uh, the problem is in the uh, sodium and uh, potassium co-transport channel uh, in the renal tubule. So what happens, they are constantly losing uh, potassium, they are losing chloride and uh, that leads to metabolic abnormalities, susceptibility to infections, uh, vomiting and that leads to failure to thrive. So these children, most of the times they would be failing to thrive. So you will see that they are faltering on their growth curves and you might be thinking of other reasons, but as you start investigating then you will find out that, you know, there is something that is pointing towards the Barter syndrome and as I told you that that would be uh, prim primary metabolic alkalosis. So they can present with failure to thrive, they can present with vomiting because of the electrolyte abnormalities, they can present with recurrent infections, uh, especially UTIs because in Barter syndrome, there is hypercalciuria. So a lot of calcium is being released or being, you know, lost in the urine and because of that high concentration of uh, calcium in the urine, they are more predisposed to uh, urinary stones. So that urinary stone can further cause recurrent urinary tract infection. So they can present with nephrocalcinosis or urinary calculi and they can present with recurrent UTIs and it presents at the early uh, part of the age spectrum. Gittleman syndrome, uh, more or less similar to Barter syndrome, but it presents in older children. It mostly presents with uh, a weakness. So there is a generalized weakness, muscular weakness. They have got a lot of muscle cramps because they are losing uh, potassium in their urine. They can also present with vomiting. The only uh, important feature about Gittleman syndrome apart from the age spectrum is that they do not have any urinary calculi because there is hypocalciuria, less calcium in the urine so they won't develop calcium stones. While in Barter syndrome there is hypercalciuria. So this is hypercalciuria, this is hypocalciuria. So they will get renal or urinary stones, this would not get any urinary stone. The most important hallmark of Gittleman syndrome is hypomagnesemia. So they lose a lot of magnesium in their urine. So there is hypomagnesemia and low, uh, obviously when there will be hypomagnesemia, there will be low blood magnesium and low blood magnesium can itself be, uh, can be quite problematic and it can present with uh, muscle weakness and muscle cramps. It also presents with hypocalcemia and that can also lead to cramps and uh, tetanic like, you know, uh, features. Little syndrome also presents in older children. Now, little syndrome is the opposite, the where you have got a lot of, you know, uh, urinary salt uh, losses. The same goes over here, but here there is high blood pressure. There is high blood pressure. Why? Because there is low renin to aldosterone ratio. So, because of that, there is high blood pressure and increased sodium. So, they would be having low potassium, but high sodium. So, pseudo hyperaldosteronism type of picture is little syndrome. It presents in older children. So, you would be having primary metabolic alkalosis with high blood pressure, with high blood pressure and hypernatremia. So in all these, you primarily get hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. Now one important thing in Barter syndrome, in Barter syndrome is that you have to clinically differentiate it from hypertrophic pyloric stenosis because pyloric stenosis also presents in early infancy. It also presents with hypokalemic, uh, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis uh, because there is vomiting. So sometimes Barter syndrome and hypertrophic pyloric stenosis can present with overlapping features. So in this particular case, if they have got like features similar to one another, it's very important that you do an ultrasound of the stomach as well so that you don't miss out on hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. So, little syndrome, hypokalemic, hypochloremic, metabolic alkalosis with hypernatremia and with high blood pressure. Now, coming down to what is pseudo Barter syndrome. Now, pseudo Barter syndrome, pseudo means false. So, it looks like Barter syndrome, but it's false. There is no Barter syndrome, basically. There is no renal 
pathology. There is no renal tubular pathology, but it presents with hypokalemic, hypochloremic, metabolic alkalosis, and this usually presents in adolescents. Adolescents who have got mental health issues, those who are suffering from eating disorders, like for example, increased purging behaviors, like one of the entity is known as bulimia nervosa. So bulimia nervosa, anorexia nervosa, these usually happens in adolescents. Most of the time, these are girls with mental health issues. And if they have got this underlying mental health condition with eating disorders, they can present with a clinical picture or a metabolic picture of Barter syndrome. But it is not Barter syndrome because there is no renal pathology. So that is known as pseudo Barter syndrome. So Barter, Gittelman, Liddell and pseudo Barter syndrome, we discussed what are the important clinical differences between these entities. Now let's talk about the treatment. So the treatment for Barter syndrome, the treatment for Barter syndrome is that you have to give them potassium supplements. So oral potassium supplements have to be given. How do we give uh, potassium supplements? Uh, I would make a further lecture on that because there is a lot of calculations when you have to give them uh, potassium supplements. So you have to give them oral potassium supplements. You have to give them potassium sparing diuretics, diuretics which spare the potassium like amyloride. And you also have to give prostaglandin synthetase inhibitors, especially endomethacine. So in Barter syndrome, you would be using potassium supplements, you would be using potassium sparing diuretics, and you would be using endomethacine, which is basically a prostaglandin synthetase inhibitor. For Gittelman syndrome, we have to give them potassium uh, supplements because there is hypokalemia. We have to give them magnesium supplements as well because there is hypomagnesemia. There is no hypomagnesemia here, but there is hypomagnesemia in Gittelman syndrome. So it has to be uh, supplemented with magnesium. And you also give potassium sparing diuretics in Gittelman syndrome as well. Little syndrome has got high uh, blood pressure. So you have to, and there is a hypernatremia. So you give them low salt diet and you also give them potassium sparing diuretics like amyloride. While for pseudobarter syndrome, because there is an underlying mental health abnormality, you have to give them mental health counseling, uh, some form of CAMS assessment, and they have to be put on dietary treatment because the underlying issue is basically deranged diet because of anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa. So they have to be started, uh, you know, on dietary management under the uh, supervision of a dietitian and probably a psychiatrist as well. So this is how we treat barter. Gittelman, Liddell and Pseudobarter syndrome. So this was a short lecture in which we discussed these renal tubulopathies and how it differs from Pseudobarter syndrome and I told you that these are those entities in which you get primarily a hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis and I discussed some of the clinical features some of the differentiating features between these entities and how do we treat them. So if you have liked this video, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and press that bell notification icon. So whenever I upload a new video, you're always on board with me. So if you've got any further questions regarding these syndromes, please put your questions down in the comment section below and I will try my level best to answer them as soon as possible. Have a very good day. Take care and bye-bye.